extra trade. Papa Smithy is KT almost priced into picking Callista. Elise, Oriana, Callista. Sorry, Elise, Callista. Is it more available here as well? A lot of contested picks. The Thresh still up and available yep. as well. You don't want to let Deft and Marta be on that Callista Thresh match uh, lane as well. That was what they were able to dismantle SKT with the first time around. Game number one, the last time we saw these two face. Yeah, at least Thresh would be a nice start of a draft, but I feel like KT had the right right read in game one. This Alice is going to be taken super early. Marta, of course, another famous Alistair player. Oh, yes. And Callista Alistair has been one of the big favorites. Might have to be Callista Rakan or the Thresh, as you mentioned. Taken by KT. Could still be Braum or something like that. Marta still yeah, with a lot of options. At least still available. Previously, Peanut has had a very high premium on Elise, so it would make sense for him to take it. They've left open other picks just to get Elise's first pick and allow him to have skirmish power. One able to get in game one, had to ban it on Blue's side, but this allows Peanut to invade pretty freely, especially if those lanes are pushing as well. And does KT decide to take something like the Galio here, thinking that they might be safe with the fact that Cassiopeia has been banned away? and then give SKT an opportunity to head towards that Lucian. Galio Gragas could certainly be a draft here by KT if they want it. It's been so successful previously. Running against SKT is certainly a different challenge. Probably have to take it here, otherwise you'd expect bans to come through targeted at the mid lane. Yeah, that Renekton and uh, Galio ban could certainly be what SKT goes for after they lock in their last one, and that is going to be the Galio picked up. SKT, what do they do to answer? Does Faker just take the Lucian right now? It's certainly one that lanes happily into ah, the Galio. Ah, Master Yi, that makes more sense. I mean, he's uh, he's played this before <laughs> <laughs> on two occasions. Doesn't make as good use of the old Doran's ring anymore, Pop Smithy. Lucian would make the most sense and will be locked in. It's banned in the second round in the previous draft. KT... Love playing the massive frontline and Callista comp. They had to run it with Ash last time. It's the sort of comp where you look at it, one damage dealer sometimes two, and say, okay, it's going to run out damage in the late game. And that's kind of, it feels like now, an old color point. Because if you consider the tank itemization available, the Gago stone plate on great example yeah. by Trogath in the last game, and also the uh, new thorn mail that's come through, the ability to soak damage for these tanks almost makes them hyper-carry tanks, which is kind of a weird thing to say. But in the past, the lifesteal, the armor penetration, and the crit damage meant so much, and it feels like those stats are kind of recreated by the stone plate and also the thorn mail. So there's an argument that the frontline gets tanky enough that Callista will inevitably be able to put through the spears because no one can get past Gragas and Galio. What I want to see KT do here is flex Galio into support, Papa Smithy. That's what I want. And I want Pawn to be able to pick some assassin in the mid lane and really jump on top of Faker and end his reign of terror that he has been able to unleash on the Lucian. It probably won't happen. KT have taken away two of Bang's champions in the Zaya and the, Tr the Tristana that he has been finding su success on recently. Has been picks into the Callista as well as the Rumble is locked in for Huni. Back to an old favorite. And I was certainly... Not going to get my wish there, Papa Smithy. It is going to be Braum considered on the side of KT. KT want to find a way to get a pushing lane against Rumble that's also a tank, which is very hard to do. It's one of the reasons that Renekton was banned by SKT, because KT's comp here, their rotational comp with tanks and globals, only really works if they have multiple pushing lanes. And the amount of pressure in the mid lane will be decent, if not ideal, into the Lucian, who does have a free lane and can control the lane quite well against Pawn. They end up going for the Jarvan, who does have decent ranged push and certainly can be another one of those frontliners. But SKT in the face of KT's favorite comp is going to be going for a very standard rotational draft. And to me, the jungle matchup might decide it again, Atlas. They've got the Elise and pushing lanes, so there still is the potential for Peanut to upset all the rotational play. KT kind of did a budget version of this tank comp in game one, but couldn't make it work because they weren't able to get the map pressure to actually set up the Talia walls and take the turrets. This time they get their favored comp, but SKT giving people their favored comp and beating them is another one of those old memes that could come true. Yeah, we've been talking about lane kingdoms so often as well, Papa Smithy, and SKT have set themselves up with some terrifying lane matchups as well. We know that KT likes to pile drive as a group. 
with this composition. Is that going to be able to happen if Galio is permanently at a quarter health bar because Faker has been shooting him the entire laning phase? Pile drive, dog pile, you're right. It's everyone gets in their comp. Grim patrons, if you were into Hearthstone <laughs> before. They really want to very hard initiate, and they certainly have that. But SKT upset their rhythm. The game was not played at the pace KT wanted in game one, and that's why it felt decided at 12 to 15 minutes. Now they have Peanut on Elise, the strongest dueling jungler. Faker, freshly undefeated on the Lucian, who has a good matchup, into the Gallio. They let KT get what they wanted to blind pick, but it wasn't a blind pick for SKT. They knew what was coming. Yeah, they knew what was coming, and they picked accordingly as well. Marta on the Rakan. They've got the Callista Rakan, which has seen so much success here in the LCK. Was debuted and used to destroy, but has seen some losses recently. We'll see whether KT is going to be able to make it work, or whether it's going to be SKT reigning supreme in a 2-0. KT fans certainly piping up now as the audience have most certainly all arrived here at the Sol E Stadium. Adorable drawing of Pina, some other <laughs> members of SKT there. Oh, Gentleman Gallio there as well, I believe, in the mid lane as Pawn, making sure that he's looking dignified as possible. SKT having mixed damage dealers is really important to making this comp work. We talked about how KT wants to play the dogpile comp around two items, Callista getting her Hurricane and the Blade of the Ruin King is usually the go point, but Pawn can't just itemize into a Bramble Vest and, you know, work his way towards his first tank item, like a Righteous Glory, for example, or another tank item and be fine. Because it's Elise Rumble, the amount of early magic damage is super high on the side of SKT. Both of them will probably itemize into flat penetration early and actually being able to get as tanky as they want to be on a budget early before you can happily finish three stone plates it's going to be difficult for KT Rolster unless they're snowballing already. Yeah. And it's almost like Pawn probably wants to go for Magic Resist early as well, just because it will be Peanut doing a whole lot of early game damage as well. well. We'll see exactly what does happen here as KT start off on these little Raptors, and that uh, Winds of War is certainly very, very good at helping out. Now, the reason why the Galio is a big pick for KT is the score gets super happy, gets the super leash. Yeah. On blue side, when you get blue side Galio, hard leash on his small raptors into a leash onto his red buff by his duo lane. Not many super leashes this week, but Galio in the meta does make it possible. T-Smap getting a little bit angry at Huni. That, Huni, that grasp of the undying, paying off with the passive of the Jarvan. Okay, bang. Not going to get knocked up by that grand entrance, and actually Mata having to be careful. Time to eat some biscuits, I believe. Trust in his knowledge of the knock-up AoE of that grand entrance. But the visual was actually suggesting he would be caught, but yeah. bang you better. Smeb has probably been our most impressive job plan. Here's the level two game. He misses flag and drag though. Yeah, doesn't get the knock-up, but there's the body slam. There's the double flashes as first blood comes out for KT in two minutes and 45 seconds. It may have been a flash party that was unnecessary, but it still was successful. That's Game. how you make a, a missed flag and drag a flashy play, Papa Smithy. That's how it works. Well, you have party casts. Apparently, we can have flash parties as well. And that's also the super leash at work, Atlas. Where was Elise during that? She was just on her red buff. She was always going to be outpaced. It was a longer route taken by Peanut. So he wasn't expecting to be there anyway. But Rumble, in the face of a super leashed Gragas, needed to be more defensive. He may have wards down, but Score's going to try again anyway. Yeah. And that Blast Plant means that there's not going to be a heck of a lot of time to react. No flashes anywhere. And there's the knock-up this time. Score's going to make his way through. But needs to hit lands. another Harpoon onto Score. He doesn't. He's dead. Yep. And that's going to be the overheat. And that's going to be another kill for Score. Peanut tries to get something back. But one versus two, not going to happen. And Poonie giveth. Poonie take the away. Fantastic flash out of Deft on the bottom side of the map. As there's the stun coming out from Wolf. But Bang's going to get the Ren Stacks pulled out of him. And KT already at a 3-0 start. Can they make it 4? No. 
not going to happen here, but this is fantastic news for KT fans and fans of three game series for the Telecom War. Exactly, they needed a gold lead. We said, how are they gonna get a gold lead early and get tanky against the mixed damage? Well, picking up three kills in the first three and a half minutes is a great way to do that in two lanes as well. Gragas awkwardly once again has all the gold. Score, share it around with your team, they need it. But that was really good pathing around the top side. Score may have been 2-0, but it was pretty anonymous in game one for a player that deserves the large plaudits that Score gets in this game. He knew exactly what his role is, and uh, look at the boot, Joy Atlas. He knows what he needs to do this yeah. game. He needs to get around there as quickly as possible. And it's not often that you see the Moby Boot purchase on the Gragas as well. He's gone Moby Boots, and he's looking for a third kill in top lane. He's Moby Bootsing into the lane brush. He is trying to uber tilt Hooney by the looks of things, who missed out on an entire wave and not, on that turret. Not a bad strategy, given Hooney's reputation for that. As we get to go to the back bottom, Lane and very nice play by Deft and Mata. The Lane Kingdom from KT with the early tanks. This is their comfort, and they're doing it again. Yep. Okay. Teleport from Pawn to get himself back into the mid lane, but we're just waiting for the score to decide to kill Hooney. Just wants to be able to land the body slam, and then these gank buddies on the top side of the map should be able to do it. There's no knock up to come in. The Hooney should be able to get himself out, but does get. Oh no, nope. he's dead. It's he's level just four. Super dead. You don't need to hit your skill shots when it's level four and the rumble is as anemic as can be. He's died twice and the sum of those purchases was just the refillable. Goes back now and buys boots and a cloth armor. And I desperately need it. Getting Smeb ahead. He actually picks up the kill this time. I was mentioning before all this, but Smeb has been our best top lane Jarvan because he's the smartest at waiting for the right time to engage. EQs haven't necessarily been on point, but the timings have been perfect. And actually, they give away the Elise, and they played around topside to the point where Peanut already is trying to put out fires and can't be the battle ward that you want to be on Elise. And can't take the initiative as well. Which That's what a battle ward is, yeah, right? It's precisely. about being there in front of the enemy jungle because you're happy with where your lanes are at. There is no initiative available because when you're firefighting, you're being reactive. Yeah. Score, at some point, you really need is to calm happening? down. Is this happening? Is this seriously yes. happening? Okay, Ward goes in, Hooney says, not again, gosh darn it. That's gonna be the flag and drag. Peanut's going to arrive, but you mentioned Anemic. This, I feel like he should be starting to gank the cannon creeps, Papa Smithy, because they're gonna be worth more money. Hooney looks non -plus. He's certainly not proud of where he's at in this game. So many repeat ganks. The boots of mobility purchase paid off as well. Goes back, doesn't have a full jungle enchant with a two and two in the early game, but Smeb also has the lead, and all Hooney can do is slowly put together his first item. It's gonna work towards the Zonias with the Seeker's Arm Guard, but it's feeling like it's a long way away. Yeah, we've got another engage on the bottom side of the map, though, as Wolf. I don't think he's gonna be able to get the stun here. Stacks up the bells, but SKT having trouble on the bottom side as well, and we heard KT talking about this. It's Okay, Pond looking for the snare. He's going to get it. Is that going to be a steal? Potentially, no. Peanut was able to grab the blue buff. Smeb going to teleport his way through, and Faker underneath the turret should be safe for now. Okay, so they don't get anything off the teleport play. Worth noting, Atlas, that if it was only top lane that was going down, it doesn't necessarily mean that much. We've criticized teams for overganking a rumble in the past unless they were actually able to get something in return because Rumble can build and put together a very cheap item. But it's the bottom lane kill in combination with what they were able to do top side that is the biggest story for KT. Picking up the kill in the 2v2 while Peanut could not be bot side has punished the Alistair draft who is a weak laner without jungle assistance or without a winning lane. So it's the bot lane kill that KT fans should be happy enough with because now they're winning in different ways. It's not just Pien it's not just holding down Hooney, who will eventually just have equalizer, a bit of magic penetration, and be okay. Yeah. And now after all of that action towards the bottom side of the map as well, KT have got that deep vision down and should be able to keep tabs on where Peanut is and thus able to continue that pressure on the bottom side, which as we talk about it, Wolf only level five, Ren gonna be pulled out, He's down to about 300 health, but KT a lot of power and a lot of pressure on this bottom out of turret. And it looks like SKT are deciding to forego defending this one for the moment. Should be able to stand for a while, though. Now, the winner is Pawn, who you mentioned. He's on the Gallio. He'll build a Bramble Vest and be okay against the Lucian, but Lucian gets a free lane. We've seen Lucian solo kill the Gallio as well. 
He's down CS, about 18 CS down, I guess 15, and also some Raptors. He's got the Bramble Vest now, so lane gets a bit better. But all he can really do is do what Kuro often did on Victor, push the lane and be okay. Throw down two Winds of War. He can't really walk up for the auto attacks. He'll miss CS invariably over time. But because his top lane and bot lane are winning and his jungler is ahead, that's all Pawn needs to do. Yeah, just nullify Faker. Make sure that he is not someone that's getting fed and able to answer the incredible pressure that Huni's under and make it so that he's a non-factor. And Scordis takes blue because he's just relying on Pawn to do his job on a budget, let's say. Rich man's jungle Grog is coming out. So he wards up the enemy topside jungle, allows the Javan to overextend even more, and now he's just being the biggest bully ever. Yeah, he's a gigantic jerk. Because now Huni's just gonna get bopped again. I don't even know whether Skull really cares about picking up a kill. The die. There's the heroic entrance to come in. That's gonna be Huni picking up a kill. It's gonna reset his gold though. But he's going to be able to flash away. It's Peanut that's going to fall, and Pawn grabs his first kill of the game. It's one for one, though. And this money that Huni's able to pick up could be very important for SKT. And it was really smart from Pawn, sorry, from Peanut, sorry, to be in the brush there, available for the guy, waited for the cask to come out, and that was the moment where they could turn on to the Gragas, who doesn't have any health in his early build, but is working slowly towards his jungle enchant. And now it's double buffs on Huni, which won't necessarily win him the lane. The item discrepancy sees to that, but it does get him the all-important gold, as you mentioned, Atlas, and he gets closer and closer to the Leandris, and he'll still be able to do his job if his equalizers are on point. Yeah, you saw the Hawkshot spot out score, so Huni knows that once again he's going to have some attention, trying to get some extra vision there, but look at the deep vision on the top side of the map for KT. In fact, deep vision everywhere. This map is a Christmas tree for the KT rolls to line up. Six and one in kills, they're ahead only by about 1,200 gold, but they have all of the tools to try and continue this pressure. Night and day in terms of map pressure or tempo as we call <laughs> as casters vision. from game one. This is what they were trying to create to allow the Talia plays to work in game one but when denied from doing so. Scores back top lane, predictably. Yeah, gonna wander over this control ward. So uh, I believe Score just wants his double buffs back. Wants to take the top lane first brick. It's the objective they actually are looking for. At least his bot side was spotted out in a control ward, I believe, already. Yep. Things going in here as well. They know that SKT are going to be playing around their bot side jungle. First time that Elise actually making proactive plays on the bottom side while KT are getting their advantage top side. Okay. Rebel not going to be able to find Fawn just yet as Faker in trouble. Scores come in. No justice punch, but it doesn't matter. Peanut in trouble now as well as Mata has the quickness, wants to find a grand entrance as he just pops over the wall, takes the ride with the spider, and Peanut, he's in the Thunderdome, he's going to be taken down, score, grabs his third of the game, another pick, Wolf is going to be answered, and KT all over game two. Yeah, KT is slamming SKT, Faker was too far to the top side of the lane when they had no power there and got ganked by the Gragas, unnecessary positioning from Faker, and then from there, one by one, the pins fall. Look at Faker who cheats top side because he's trying to dodge skill shots. And it's Turbo Gragas. The boots of mobility <laughs> have been so important. He's the fastest fat man in the West, the East, all around the world. And from there, the collapse inevitably is going to be first collapse by score, first collapse by the Jarvan. And it's just more and more kills for KT Rolster. Yeah, as Hillbilly Gragas, he looks a little bit like one of the dwarves from uh, Lord of the Rings. So obviously a natural sprint of Papa Smithy, able to cl cover those short distances very dangerously as KT will take down first brick on the bottom side of the map. They already had so much pressure there, but there's a 30 CS lead now for Def, just because the rest of the map has gone so woefully for SKT and that early kill on top of it. I'm smiling wide, Atlas, and it's not because KT is winning, it's because it's been the most KT Rolster series <laughs> so you KT. could ever expect. Game one, just the doldrums of defeat, everyone thinking, oh, it's SKT again. Uh, it didn't mean anything the rest of the season. And then KT, this is what they've done with so many teams. They're 10 and one with the Galio pick. It always functions the same. The queries will be, there, be, will be there about late game damage, but not late game tankiness for sure. And when you're this far ahead in gold, even the tanks are putting out crazy damage. Yeah, and when it's also an SKT lineup that doesn't have tanks of their own, it's going to be a front line that's unkillable against a team that tanks can kill. I mean, you're not going to have very many people that can stand up to even someone walking at you with a thorn mail. 
apart from maybe Huni and Peanut, who don't necessarily do the auto attack damage, but they're still not going to be able to kill these guys after they've got those magic resist items that they will inevitably pick up. Pawns, a recipe short Ooh. of that Thorn Mail you mentioned at a uh, very fast clip. Oh, yes. SKT are not going to be walking in to contest any dragons at this point in the game. No. That much is certain. Play the Ruin King already complete for death. Yeah, Bang has a BF sword to answer, going for pop probably the Infinity Edge base build, but will go for a Zeal item most likely as the next choice. But it almost doesn't matter at this stage. Often those builds are for rotating around the map for when you're able to take initiative, but there's not a lot of initiative that SKT have available to them so far. Another game we're incredibly spoilt with our first few dragons. The first cloud going to come in of the series. Otherwise, it's been nothing but volcanoes. Not like Peanut was spoilt being able to take his own red buff, given how much Gragas has been playing on the red side jungle of SKT. Not no cocoon to land. Oh, good sidestep from Pawn. Or maybe that was just where he was walking. Peanut predicting a juke that didn't come. And that's going to be Rift Herald falling down. So KT... Wanting to break open more than just that bottom outer turret. See whether it is going to be used here in the mid lane as Pawn sets himself up for this potential 1-3-1 that the double teleport does give them the ability to use. And Smeb going to make short work of this top outer turret that I feel took a little bit longer to go down because KT just wanted to farm Hooney some more. One thing about this game is that this is the game we know KT Rolster can have against any opponent, right? We've yep. seen them play these frontline focused comps many times and blow games open pre-20 minutes. It's where their big gold lead differential, their largest gold lead of any team in the world at 15 minutes comes from, is games like this. But it actually means more in this series because it's game two, because we saw how strong SKT can be in game one, Atlas. You mentioned that it actually puts the wins back in the sails of SKT, who have been struggling as yep. fans internationally know. So actually seeing what SKT is capable of and then seeing KT Rolster put them to the sword like this gives the important perspective and also means that if we ever get that best of five, regardless of result of this game or the future, you know how much the swings and how big they can be over the course of just a couple of games. Yeah, and the spring final is what I want to go to here because it was the 3-0 and it felt like KT were ultimately demoralized after game one and then it just got worse as the series went on. And looking at this series after game number one, a lot of our minds went to, can KT even mentally get back into this? Obviously, that is absolutely the case. And they certainly can, but it has certainly been a question mark in the past as now we've got another engage. I think that was Bang, but I don't actually know because he was mostly just dead. Yeah, it's just going for the mid lane turret. They prepped all the vision in the red side jungle earlier. Here's the Rift Herald. They'll probably want two turrets from this, given there's no Baron to fall back to. It's somehow only 16 minutes into the game. <laughs> I'm sure Hooney is thinking this is the longest 16 minutes of his life. Yeah. He's got himself a haunting, guys, though, Papa Smithy. Is. Yeah, there's another charge. This Rift Herald is doing some work. They just run it all the way up mid, take both of the outer and the inner turrets. And KT now looking to rotate and try and grab Faker. Faker wondering what the heck he can do to get out of this circumstance. This pawn's just going to wander in and punch the guy. Good relentless pursuit to try and get him out. But Turbo score. Fat Man. Yeah, he is very, very fast. Just bops him, says thanks for the uh, thanks for the kill. Thanks for the setup, pawn. This bang has respawned, but he's just cleaning up this mess that is the mid lane of SKT. Same feelings we were thinking about SKT in game one. You're feeling the same sort of pressure and tempo on the side of KT Rolster in game two. That's why the best of three is so exciting. Even Europe learned it eventually. <laughs> because we're going to get a third game most likely. This is the sort of game where the throw from KT would have to be pretty impressive. It would take up multiple throngs, you would say, of team fights where they threw themselves at SKT for them to lose out. I feel like they'd also have to all of a sudden be on different champions as well because... Deft's Callista is pretty good at winning. Pawn's Galio's only lost once, Papa Smithy. And Scores Gragas is legendary. Martyr's on an engaged support. Like, there's just everything going right. And Smeb's in the game. Pretty sure that's almost all you need. His uh, J4 stats, I believe, undefeated at the moment. Is that one of his 6-0 champions? That is his 6-0, Jarvan. You just go in zone here. They don't need to overdive. And let's see if KT can be poised or whether they are looking for style points. Cheeky extra auto attack does cost left half, uh, deft half of his health bar. 
maybe suboptimal, but there's the Equalizer just clear out the minion wave. Desperation here, Varus KTs, there's the flash. The barrel comes in as well, and there's the engagement from Mata. Huni gets cataclysmed. That's going to be the flash out from Smebu, who's tanking the turret. More kills potentially here, but Deft can't tank too much of this turret because he doesn't have the health bar. Minion Wave's not there, so KT actually further the dive because they want to take down the turret and punish Lucian, who has been top this entire time. Not being able to take the inner turret will be a problem. That's why they continue to stick around, and KT, we see Smeb teleporting in. They want to kill the best player to ever play League of Legends once again. Yeah. Juan looking for that Justice Punch to try and get the knockup. Does close some distance, and he's just walking at the Lucian for now. Blast Cone just to do the ring around the Rosie as Faker gets pinged have vision. on. Doesn't have vision of the Jarvan. Okay, this is a 1v1 though as Faker looking for a good sidestep. Heroic Entrance is going to get Pawn in amongst it. And that's going to be his turn to tank up the damage of Faker. He's playing so tricksy, but you can't get away from that AoE taunt. And that's going to be, like you said, that master of the mid lane taken down by Pawn. Just padding their stats at this point, not actually growing anything. Did not take the inner turret in bot lane, we should mention. Uh, Peanut, he's in a lot of trouble. There's the Fates call. They're looking for Peanut, uses his flash, gets himself out of the way, and KT go back to taking away the vision. Baron just spawning here as it ticks over 20 minutes. And it feels like a game that's gone for a little bit longer than that, Papa Smithy, but no. We are a very short way through. And catch up experience, and just the fact that Peanut hasn't been able to help top and has been farming instead means and when the Baron suddenly comes on the board, no guarantees KT Roll still be able to secure that. They've made some kerfaffles around Baron in recent times. Yes. Almost feels like staying away from Baron and not making it an objective they force might actually help KT Roll to roll through. Or using it as an objective to kill SKT again. Peel off, they have absolutely. To, yeah, certainly don't go for the smite battle. Score, I just don't think it's worth it. Pride is most certainly on the line. We remember the last time that were, they were able to actually secure the Baron at the end of that BBQ series. That was a time that Score actually personally said he'd rather forget. <laughs> gold yep. lead in some of these roles, massive. 2,200 gold in top. Actually is only 20 minutes into the game, so 100 gold a minute. You'll take it if you're Smeb. Nice lead for Pawn as well, which is put into being just the most unkillable. Yeah. No one does damage to him. No, it's, this is what happens. He's got both of the items that he needs at a time in the game where often you'd have like one and a half maybe, and they wouldn't be expensive ones. Funny watching score. One into water brush, but not allowed to. <laughs> yeah, that could be the pickup on Damato, who just uses it as an engage opportunity. Def throws him back into the fight as Peanut tries to get out, and Faker, he's dead already. Equalizer in a decent position, but Huni should die. KT just too far ahead as the triple kill comes in for Deft. Peanut's still alive. KT making movements towards the Baron. Should be allowed to have Pawn just stay around and interrupt him. No flash from Peanut, no wards anywhere near the Baron. It should be the free Baron that KT Rolster would certainly prefer. While SKT looked for the gank brush, too far behind to actually make it work. 10,000 gold lead for KT Rolster when they kill the Baron. Yeah, fantastic patience from Deft as well. Gave Marta all the opportunity to press every button as he was getting into it, as we will see it again. This is a gold lead, even Marta has gold lead from here. Very nice knock up, able to have the Fates call come in. It's a knock up party for SKT. They didn't want to RSVP to this one. They didn't have a choice. <laughs> Peer pressure is a strong thing. From there, the killing fields for Daft. Yeah, just getting the Ren sets over and over again. Triple kill comes down. And that is going to be the Baron. KT, all the control you could possibly ask for. Faker may need to be careful. Even this feels like an overextension with your friends just around the corner. Deft and Marta moving back towards that bottom side. We'll see whether they take themselves a luxury Cloud Drake or whether it is going to be more tower pressure that they're going to opt in for. You never want to slow down with this comp because there'll be other games where you're not this far ahead where you can't afford to take your foot off the accelerator. So you want to play this like it's a normal game. You don't want to play it like you're 15 kills up. That's where KT, I think, falls into bad play patterns because we see games where they just have a bit of fun, where they're a little bit off the boil. And then when they're in a game where they are closer than perhaps it first appears, they can make errors that if they tighten their plays on stage, they wouldn't make as often. So I want to see KT play this out as seriously as possible rather than skipping up steps because they're 12,000 goldish ahead. Yeah, and we've heard in their most recent interviews, because we get interviews with KT a lot given their gigantic winning streak, seven matches in a row, that they have said things like made, made noises about the fact that they have noticed 
this particular trend of maybe losing focus if they're too far ahead. It's been a long time now, so when yeah. they talk about just recently noticing trends, I wonder if they have <laughs> yeah. any insight at all. That's a, that's a very good point. However, it's good to know that they actually know that. It has just been one of those things that has happened, but they're easily able to break open the bottom inhibitor turret. Looks like they're doing work in the mid lane as well. Pawn and Smeb, the tanky members, just shrugging off the damage that SKT are trying to put forward. Arrow sails by majestically, and that's going to be the headbutt pole rise from Wolf. Has to flash his way out, though, as this tower will inevitably also fall down. Now, KT never take the bait. They just stay on the turret. They stay on the inhibitor. Everything up for a re-engage after the arrow wa uh, wailed by, but they don't over-engage. They do back away, and this is what I wanted to see from KT. Yeah. Going to head back to base now is multiple members of this KT roster, and there's the snowballed Bloodthirster from Deft. Has his QSS built up as well, triple lifesteal to potentially be finished off, but this is what you do. If they can't insta-burst you as Callista, you just dance around and never die because you've got so much lifesteal, they cannot get through it. He's pretty much a tank as well. And Pawn decided he wanted to do damage, doesn't need a Gargos stone plate, because they've got a Gragas and a Jarvan with two already. So they're uh, pretty happy with their front line. <laughs> yep. Well, and you're against uh, Blade of the Ruin King and Eliandri's Torment. Why don't you just build flat resistances? As there's the grand entrance. Faker in trouble. Death wanting to make it a 1v1, but Pawn is going to nick that kill just at the last second. Two levels down, but there's no fair 1v1s. The chivalry is not happening here. <laughs> no. The British fans in our audience aren't going to appreciate this lack of respect, but uh, <laughs> no need for 1v1s when you're so far ahead as a team. Well, it could have been a potential catch any other game for SKT there as Wolf and Peanut were set up, but KT can freely face check now. Because if it's Pawn walking into a brush, you're not going to be able to burst him down, and he may just kill you. You're not tanky enough. Trial victory being enacted by KT. Want to take down three inhibitors. Aker will respawn because it's so damn early into the game, only 25 minutes. Eternity for SKT fans, though. Yes. You have to remember that this is a best of three. SKT will have blue side once again in game number three. As Smeb's getting himself amongst it. They haven't taken down the turret just yet as Deft does still have that Fates call to pull Mutter out if he decides to go aggressive. Boom. And look at this fantastic cask into the back line. There's the trigger and there's KT ripping SKT apart. 20 kills to two right now as Hooney's able to get another. Hooney, of course, the one camped to high heaven, but also has 100% of the kills for KT. He's looking to try and get another, but won't be able to do it as Faker has to look on in terror as Def just tears apart his base. The Ren stacks are in there. Not going to be enough damage there as Def says, well, I guess I'll just win the game. And KT even out the series in a game even more decisive than game one. Yeah, somehow they won up SKT who had a great game one, but KT rolls to lock in the Galio. They lock in their comfort. SKT allows them to assemble the troops and KT Rolster put them to the firing squad. Very, very one-sided game. And I think people will be baited to say, so just look at Hooney, just focus on his woes. He was camped to high heaven, but what was happening with their jungler and their bot lane that allowed the 2v2 kill to happen? Sure, the first couple of kills, Peanut wants to react, he wants to be there for the next one, but at some point, you have to make things happen elsewhere. Rumble will eventually get some items, and sure, you're losing in top, but just playing around top further and not making a visit to the bottom side of the map for 15 to 20 minutes, actually having somewhere you can go, rather than putting out fires in the top, just accelerated the downfall of SKT. Yeah, just wasn't an option. Score playing like an absolute god this game at the same time. Yes, he took advantage of Hooney a lot, but that cast, that up, uh, the, the, sorry, the body slam, thought it was a headbutt pulverized because it was that.